Approach to a patient with breathlessness. Let's begin our approach using P3 Maftosa, 3P, present complaint, past complaints, personal history. Let's start with present complaints. Do you mind if I ask you what has brought you into hospital? Here, can you please tell me more about it? Now, we ask detailed questions using the mnemonic Sadpura regarding onset. How did it start? Did it come on suddenly or gradually? Ask, what was your breathing like six months ago? Is the breathlessness constant and intermittent? Duration, for how long is it present? Progression, since the start of symptoms, is it getting better or worse or staying the same? Is it the first time or were there previous episodes? When was the last episode? Determine the frequency of episodes, how often they are occurring? Aggravating factor, have you noticed what makes it worse? Is the exertion or lying down make it worse? Relieving factor, have you noticed what makes it better? Is the rest make the symptoms better? Associated symptoms, chest pain suggests underlying cardiac ischemia. Palpitations suggest the presence of underlying arrhythmia. Have you measured your pulse during these episodes of palpitations? Are they regular or irregular? Presyncope or syncope can be due to arrhythmia or aortic stenosis or hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. Orthopnea indicates left ventricular dysfunction. Ask, how many pillows you use while asleep? Paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea indicates the left ventricular failure. Ask, do you ever wake up at night feeling breathless? Edema indicates congestive cardiac failure. Corpulmonal can be seen in patients with good left ventricular function but with pulmonary hypertension due to advanced lung disease, that is, COPD or interstitial lung disease. Inquire about the history of leg swelling. Ask about asymmetry, as asymmetrical leg swelling may suggest deep vein thrombosis, thereby implicating thromboembolic disease as a cause of breathlessness. Next, ask about respiratory symptoms, such as cough, sputum, wheeze, and hemoptysis, suggest underlying respiratory disease. Here, you may have a clue about the cause of breathlessness, as a dry, non-productive cough suggests interstitial lung disease. A productive cough may indicate infection, suppurative lung disease, or malignancy. Hemoptysis can occur in pulmonary embolism, infection, and malignancy. Hemoptysis can also be seen in patients with pulmonary congestion, especially with mitral stenosis. Wheeze signifies asthma or COPD. Thyroid disease. Hyperthyroidism can cause breathlessness. Ask about the presence of any weight loss, heat intolerance, tremor, sweating. Moreover, ask about neurological symptoms, as neuromuscular weakness can result in breathlessness such as guillain barre syndrome. Simply ask about any recent respiratory or diarrheal illness, progressive ascending weakness, and ptosis. Also, ask about the features of myasthenia gravis like fatigability, diplopia, ptosis. Regarding vasculitic symptoms, ask about fever, joint aches, muscle aches, and rashes would suggest pulmonary vasculitis. Next, ask about the features of renal disease. Renal failure can lead to breathlessness due to fluid retention or metabolic acidosis. Meanwhile, ask about the exercise tolerance. It is essential to quantify the reduction in exercise tolerance. Past complaints. Similar complaints. Has anything like this has happened to you? For how long? What did you take for it? Is it well controlled? Are you taking any medication? Do you have any long-time medical condition? If yes, then ask how long? Is it well controlled? Check for any cardiovascular risk factors like diabetes, hypertension, hypercholesterolemia, or any previous myocardial infarction. Do you remember the last blood pressure measurement? Have you had your cholesterol level checked? Have you ever had an ultrasound of your heart? Have you ever been told that you have a heart murmur? Ask about hospitalization, saying, have you ever been hospitalized? If the patient says yes, then ask for what purpose? Recent surgery is a risk factor for pulmonary embolism. Next step is personal complaints. I'm going to ask you a few personal questions, and whatever you say will be confidential. Smoking. Do you smoke? If the patient says yes, then ask, how many cigarettes do you smoke a day? For how long have you been smoking? Tell me about your sleep. Do you drink alcohol? If the patient says yes, proceed by asking what do you prefer to drink? How much? For how long have you been drinking like this? How is your appetite? 
Recreational drugs. By any chance, do you take recreation drugs? If the patient says yes, then proceed by asking, sorry to ask you, but what do you do? How do you take it? If injecting, ask, by any chance do you use a new needle all the time? For how long you are doing this? Do you use any other recreational drugs? Weight change. Have you been weighing on the higher side? If yes, ask about bowel habits. How often do you open your bowels? Have you noticed any change? Sexual history. Are you sexually active? If the patient says no, then ask, have you ever been sexually active? If the patient is sexually active, then ask, sorry to ask you this but are you in a stable relationship? For how long? Are you on any contraception? Did you travel abroad before your symptoms? Did you have any sexual relationship there? If the patient is a woman, ask about 4P, period, LMP. When were your last periods? If more than 4 weeks, then she might be pregnant. How many days did they last? Are they irregular? Do you get pain? Any bleeding between your periods or after intercourse? Are you on pills? Oral contraceptive pills are a risk factor for pulmonary embolism. Pregnancy. If she is not active, so she is not pregnant, then ask. Have you ever been pregnant? Duration of pregnancy? Mode of delivery? How many children do you have? Any miscarriage or abortion? Any complications before, during, or after pregnancy? Pap smear? When did you have your last pap smear? What was the report? Was it normal? If it is abnormal, have you booked an appointment with GP? Allergy? Family history? For carcinoma history in a family is essential. Ask. I am very sorry to ask. But anyone in your family is diagnosed with a sinister disease, cancer. Also, check for ischemic heart disease or hypercoagulable state like thrombophilia. Travel history. Ask, have you recently traveled abroad? Occupation history. What do you do for a living? Ask about the nature of the work. Does it involve exertion that might precipitate breathlessness? Ask how much these symptoms are affecting your daily living? Whether he has had to take time off from work due to your symptoms? Social history. Where do you live? Whom do you live with at home? Do you drive? Inquire about the functional status of the patient, particularly the impact on the activities of daily living. Anything else you want to tell me? Now, in the end, take your time for an impression. Then, turn to the examiner and say, based upon my history, my most probable diagnosis is this. My differentials are this, this and that. Thank you for watching. Stay connected and subscribe to this channel for more interesting medical professional videos, and good luck with your exam.